A battle between humans and monsters is commencing, some knights are fighting wolves, they are having a hard time dealing with the wolves, because the number of monsters far exceeds the number of humans. A girl on her knees is calling for Hero Rin, her clothes are torn because of the battle, and a monster with human appearance is front of her holding a javelin and he is about to kill her. Just then someone intercepts his attack, but his sword gets broken. Jumping in front of her he asks if he is the leader of all the monsters, she calls out her name Rilius, and asks him why is he here. With a smile, he says he promised her that he will take her job. He is trained for a year, he says to the monster which I guess is Hero Rin, that if she is alive, she have to fight it, and that's why he will defeat her, he will show her the power of blacksmith, he takes out a hammer, and is ready to fight the hero or monster. Some time ago, Rilius is sleeping peacefully in his bed, when Rin wakes him up saying today is his coming of age ceremony and he should wake up, Rilius wakes up, he sees her in his bed, and when his cogs start turning he jumps out of the bed, yelling at her, that what is she doing in his room? After getting up he gets ready and heads out of his room, he is in a country called Waltos, there's a festival called coming of age ceremony where the kids who have become fifteen years old would participate, after going down the stairs, he goes into the living room where his parents greet him, and are sorry that Rin bothered him, his parents and Rin are his family, and this place is called Wateratorian, his real parents were adventurers, who died on an adventure, after some time he was adopted by his new family. Rilius asks his father what's his job today and he says to him to calm down a bit, there wasn't supposed to be a big crowd, he also says to Rilius that today is his coming of age ceremony and he should show some enthusiasm, so Rilius just asks him if something will change if he shows enthusiasm, at most he will probably get a better sacred weapon or profession. Sacred weapons are those weapons which are given to the humans by gods. And profession like swordsman, knight, wizard, etc. people are given sacred weapon and a suitable profession, and they decide how they want to spend their lives with that profession. If you can get a powerful sacred treasure in profession you can gain wealth and fame. For the people who live in the country of Waltos, these two things are important, as they direct their life. His mother says that she will leave Rin in his care and he should hurry to the church. With a smile and a thumbs up he says of course to his mother and Rin is somewhat dejected. Everyone is happy in the town because of the ceremony, and because every fifteen-year-old kid is going to become an adult today. Rin sees a beautiful pendant in a shop and runs towards it, the merchant sees the money-making opportunity and goes full on salesman mode, and says this is a new item from the West Capital, he says it's only for four thousand, and asks Rilius if he will buy one for his girlfriend, Rin says to Rilius that he just called me your girlfriend and what does he thinks about it. Rilius denies his offer and says they are not a couple which leaves Rin teary-eyed and she asks him to go to the night festival together, Rilius tells her that he can't dance so he is not going, Rin says a full-fledged adult like him should be able to dance and pushes him a bit, which makes Rilius lose his balance and he stumbles forward and bumps into some mean-looking dude, Rilius apologizes to him and the mean-looking dude just says be careful to Rilius while staring him down and leaves. He has a heavy sword on his back and they both say he has a good sacred weapon, and wonder if he is adventurer. Rin asks Rilius what kind of sacred weapon he wants, and he replies he wants a sacred weapon that can make him look like an adventurer, he wants to help Rin's family for their kindness and for adopting him. She again asks him what will he do if gets the legendary hero profession, he replies that it's impossible, she says there's always a chance, and he will be able to live comfortably for rest of his life. After some time they reach the Carlos church, after going inside they see there's a lot of people, on stage a boy gets a sacred weapon fire blade. Rilius thinks about getting a sacred weapon and adventurer job, while the nun on stage calls the next person to come on the stage and pray to sacred stone. Sacred stone is a jet black stone, which is activated once a year during the coming of age ceremony, by praying to it, one can receive a sacred weapon and a profession. Rin says there's only three more people left until it's their turn, so who should go first, Rilius asks her if he can go first. Rin makes fun of him by saying his face is full of enthusiasm. Rilius tells her to shut up and stop making fun of him. The nun calls out for the next person to come on stage and pray to the sacred stone. Rilius starts making his way to the sacred stone and thinks that there's no way that he will get the hero profession, 
he is not expecting, so why is he so excited, Rilius gets to the sacred stone, and starts praying to the sacred stone. He asks the sacred stone to give him a good sacred weapon, and closes his eyes, when he opens it, he sees that he got a sacred weapon which is create hammer, and his profession is a blacksmith, after seeing it, the nun was about to laugh but she holds it in, turns out that blacksmith is a profession that nobody wants in this country, it's the most unfavorable profession. In this world where everyone is given a weapon called sacred weapon, it is said that blacksmiths are only able to make ordinary weapons. The sacred weapon can't be damaged easily, every sacred weapon has its own unique and powerful skill, and it can't be demonstrated only by thinking about it. Whereas a blacksmith's skill is only to produce, it's also limited to below sacred weapons, sacred weapons can't be damaged easily and doesn't need to be carried, there's also no reason for anyone not to use sacred weapons in a life and death situation, while he can only make weapon, but that weapon is also useless compared to the sacred weapons, in other words really his profession is useless. Rilius gets on his knees thinking that he has been given the worst sacred weapon and profession, Rin tries to comfort him by saying it's okay and there will be no problem for her to live a normal life, Nun asks for the next person to come so she goes to the sacred stone, while Rilius thinks that it is true that there will be no problems for him to live a normal life, but being a blacksmith does not help him in life either. He can't live a better life than what he has now, he just wanted to repay the kindness of the ones who raised him. He hopes he will continue to have a peaceful life there, while he was thinking all that the sacred stone shines brightly and some lightning sparks is coming out of it, and everyone is shocked because no one knows what is going on, someone yells at Rin to tell the nun what she is doing. Turns out that Rin got the sacred weapon Excalibur, and her profession is hero, everyone in church is happy and shocked at the same time. The nun asks Rin to wait here and goes outside, which leaves Rin and Rilius all alone inside the room. Rilius asks Rin how she is feeling, she replies by saying that she does not understand that she is the hero, and wonders what will happen next, the profession of the hero has been discovered several times. It is said that all of them served the country and made great contribution towards many victories in various battlefield. Turns out Rin hates fighting and even if it's an honorable profession, it's a burden on her. Rilius thinks that if it was something that can be exchanged, he would gladly volunteer to do it. After some time a man comes to greet them, he is the bishop who manages the church in this city, he asks her that is it correct to assume that she has the hero profession and she will receive the favor of God. The bishop asks Rin if she is the hero and she confirms it, he never expected to meet a hero in a church which he managed and says he will immediately report this to the country. Rin tries to say something but Rilius cuts her off saying Rin does not want to fight, and asks if she really has to fight as hero? And Bishop replies saying if she is given the title of the hero profession, she should obey the country, so Rilius asks what she has to do from now on, the bishop tells them that first, she will have to work with the knights to improve her fighting ability, and after that, she will go on a journey to defeat the monsters that are causing havoc around the world. Rin says she is just an ordinary person, but the bishop denies it by saying a hero profession is the absolute, it's selected by the will of the gods and Rin isn't an ordinary person now. Rilius asks the bishop if he can give her some time to think about it, so bishop tells him that he will inform them tomorrow. After that they leave the church and head back to home, on the way home Rilius thinks that it's already impossible to ask the church, and she will have to be the hero. And thinks what should he do now? While thinking all this he hears some people talking about appearance of an hero and their sacred weapon is Excalibur, 100 years ago a knight captain who became hero also had same weapon. Rin is sad so Rilius tells her not worry about it and they should talk with their parents first. Rin grabs Rilius's jacket and asks him if he can keep this a secret from their parents, Rilius asks her if she is sure. And she tells him that she does not want to make them worry, she is sure that they will be worried about her and with a forced smile Rin says she does not want to make them worry about her. Rilius thinks that she has always been like this, she prioritizes others first and tries to encourage everyone, and that's why he doesn't want her to be the hero. Rin goes to home first, and with worry for Rin on his mind Rilius thinks what he can do to help Rin. At night people are enjoying the festival and dancing around a huge fire, Rin and Rilius didn't go to festival and are at home, with his sacred weapon, the creation hammer in his hand, Rilius thinks what can he do with the hammer of creation. 
and goes to Rin's room, she asks him what's going on. And he tells her that their mother made them dinner, Rin happily jumps from bed and starts running out of the room, but Rilius calls out her name, and in response she turns around, after which Rilius gives a light smack on her head, and tells her that she doesn't have to force herself to smile, Rin gets emotional and tears start coming out of her eyes, Rilius tells her that he is also scared, after which Rin starts crying even more and says she doesn't know what she should do, and will she really have to defeat the dragons and save the world like in the stories. Rilius hugs her tightly, at first she is a bit shocked but a bit later hugs him back, and they both start crying. After some time when they cool down, Rin apologizes and says she is fine now, after which Rilius tells her that she doesn't have to do anything even if she becomes a hero, and she replies saying if it was like that she wouldn't mind, she continues by saying she thought that she would continue to live leisurely as a daughter of an innkeeper. So Rilius says he thought that too and depending on the profession he would sometimes try to be an adventurer to earn some pocket money. Rin says she would have gotten mad at him while treating his injuries, but instead she became a hero, and now she will have to train like a hero from now on, and will have to travel to protect others when they are in need. With a determined expression Rilius says he will not let her fight alone, Rin is shocked after hearing that, and Rilius continues and says he will try to find a way because when he lost his parents the world looked dark to him, Rin was the only person who comforted him, and this time it's his turn. He says that blacksmith is the worst profession, but he will change that, and he will get stronger, and he will take her job, but until then she should do her best. Rin becomes happy after hearing Rilius say all that, and says thank you. Seeing her happy face Rilius also smiles, and Rin says she is sorry that he has to hear all of her whining, and invites him to dance with her, and Rilius tries to say no by saying that it's already pretty late and they should take a rest. But Rin is not going to take a no and says she doesn't know when she will see him next time, and moves her hand forward asking for his hand, after hearing it, Rilius puts his hand on her hand, and they start dancing. One day later Rin left the town, and joined the knights and began to learn how to use her sacred weapon. Their parents accepted that but they were still worried, Rilius is living a normal life at the inn, that doesn't attract many customers. He have been researching about his profession. But nothing new has been discovered since decades ago, it seems to be a rare profession like the hero. He thinks that, can he even use it to help Rin, if things are like this? While Rilius thinking all that a girl drops a plate, and was about to pick it up from her hands, but Rilius tries to stop her, and says she should use a broom to clean it up, seeing Rilius nearby she gets apologetic and tears form in the corner of her eyes, her name is Maya, and she is from the beast man race. Rilius takes over her and starts cleaning the broken plate, and thinks what he should do, and what he can do with his blacksmith's sacred weapon, while he was thinking, he hears a voice in his head, which tells him that he is holding a destroyed item, and does he want to destroy it again. Rilius is shocked and the voice repeats itself, Rilius thinks what is this voice he is hearing, and the voice says, by destroying this item, he can make a new plate. Rilius calls out to his creation hammer, and in mere seconds a hammer forms in his hands, the hammer looks dope though, and with his hammer in his hands, he touches the broken piece of the plate, and all the pieces of the plate gets surrounded by magical light and starts floating, after which all the pieces of the plate get sucked into his sacred weapon the creation hammer. Rilius is shocked that all the pieces of the plate really got absorbed by his hammer, Maya thanks him for cleaning up for her, and he says it's not a big deal. After that he gets up, Maya gets confused but he says that he will clean the rest and goes out of the room, after closing the door he opens his skill, which tells him that by absorbing the fragments of the broken plate, it is possible to create a new one. And asks if he wants to create a new one, with that a cross and a circle appears in front of him, Rilius is a bit hesitant but even so he presses the circle, and a magic circle appears above his hand, and after some time a new plate comes out of it. If I had this skill I wouldn't have to face my mom's slippers so many times. Rilius is shocked that the broken plate is really fixed, turns out this is his first time using his blacksmith skill, also his skill is only level 1. The voice in his head tells him that level is the current ability of the profession, to increase the level he needs to gain experience points, and he can get experience points by crafting new things, or by defeating the monsters, Rilius thinks that he can only create plates now, so he starts destroying and crafting the same plate again and again, 
and after some time his ability levels up, the voice tells him that his skill has leveled up and a new ability has been unlocked. Just when he gets his new ability he sees writings over everything in the room. He was running in the hallway when his father asks him what's wrong, he asks his father if the bed in 101 still broken, and his father says yes, he reaches the room 101 and sees the bed in very bad condition, so Relius takes out his hammer, and the bed starts floating and a magic circle forms under the bed, after fixing the bed, he levels up again, and thinks that his profession is not about only making weapons, he can make a lot of things with his blacksmith profession. And the more he levels up, the more things he can create, and his physical ability is also raised with leveling up. Previously, he didn't know how he can help Ren as a blacksmith, but now if he just raises level, he can become stronger, is this solo leveling but as a blacksmith? Thus the weakest profession in the world makes his decision to rise. It's July in Valtos now. It's been two months since the Age of Ceremony Festival. Mir and Rilius are training together by running around the town. Mir is an adventurer and Rilius considers her as a perfect training partner, they have spent the last two months training and understanding their skills. It's July and the weather is very hot, and because of the hot weather Mir plops down on the ground, and Rilius takes out cold water out of his item box skill, Mir drinks the water and says water is really cold, and she is quite jealous of his item box kill. Item box is a skill that allows the user to store and manage items, but Rilius's item box skill is a bit different because he can store things that he has destroyed or created himself, the hammer of creation absorbs the material so he can create things. He has worked on this item box skill for the last two months, those are the skills that come with the sacred weapon, however, in order to find it, you need the appraisal tool, and one can't get such things unless they are a member of the royal family, so Rilius has to find it himself. After hearing Rilius's explanation Mir praises him, and after a bit Rilius levels up again, Mir asks him what's his level now and Rilius tells her that he is now level 15. Rilius has been smithing almost every day, and doesn't know if this fast enough or not, and apparently no one else in any other profession knows their own skill level. After leveling up to level 15 Rilius sees he can make one more thing now, so he takes out his hammer of creation, and smacks it on the ground. Just when smacks it a magic circle appears on the ground, Mir is shocked and asks him what he is trying to make now, the magic circle starts shining brightly and after a bit a sword comes out of it, Rilius is really happy and shows the sword to Mir, this is the first time Rilius has made a sword, and Mir thinks that it's late for that and it's a blacksmith's job to make weapons, after taking a closer look at the sword, Mir points out that the sword is a bit broken, and Rilius gets shocked after hearing it, Rilius takes a closer look at the sword and says she is right and notices that the sword he made is rank F, just after noticing it, the voice tells him that he has unlocked a new skill, and now he can check the ranks of any object, there are 7 ranks ranging from, F rank, being the lowest and, S rank, is the top rank. After listening to the explanation, Rilius realizes that all the things he has made should also have the ranks, and he uses his item box skill and a magic circle appears near his hand and at first he takes out a bed which is at A rank, then he takes out a F rank chair, and the forks and spoons he made are A rank and C rank, and then he takes out a S rank plate, and thinks that the plates are the only things that he can make best right now, and the higher his level is, the higher his creation's rank will rise and if he wants make higher ranked swords, he will need to raise his level, and starts grinning, Mir asks him if everything is okay, and he says it's nothing, and they should return to the inn. Once Mir and Rilius return to the inn, they see that Rilius's parents are worried about something, and Mir asks them what's wrong, Rilius's father tells them that they have been getting complaints about how hard the bed is in room 102, and might have to buy a new one, and he doesn't have any money to spare for the inn, so it will take a long time and he doesn't know what he should do, Rilius thinks a bit, and tells them that he can make bed for them if they want, his parents are shocked, and asks him what he means by that, and Mir tells them that with Rilius's blacksmith profession, he can make beds, his mother says that she thought that blacksmiths can only make weapons, but Rilius tells her that he can make all kind of things, that he is used to. His father understands and asks him how long it will take him to make a new bed, 
and Rilius tells him he can make it in a couple of minutes, his father says what does he mean by that, and Rilius tells him that if he wants him to make something he can make it immediately, his father is shocked, so Rilius says it's better if he just shows him, they head to room 102, and his father isn't sure about this, Rilius moves towards the bed, and smacks the bed with his hammer and with a thud the bed splits, in half, his father is holding back his tears and asks him why is he destroying it, is he in his rebellious phase, Rilius tells him to calm down, and absorbs the bed in his creation hammer, his father couldn't watch silently and again tries to, just stop dude and let the man work in peace, Rilius uses his skill, and a magic circle forms around his hand, and after some time a new bed comes out of nowhere. His parents are amazed that he made a brand new bed in couple of seconds, and his mother starts jumping on the bed for quality check and says it's super fluffy now, Rilius checks the rank of the bed, and sees that it's now a, rank S bed. His father and mother are happy because now they don't have to buy any furniture and say that the blacksmith profession is good as the hero profession, and Rilius tells them that he is going in dining room and will rebuild all the furniture. His mother says it's almost like magic, lady, it is magic. His father hugs him from back and says his skill is amazing and both his parents are happy, but Rilius thinks he is not sure if he will be able to help Lin, because he hasn't been able to verify his profession's fighting ability yet, and thinks if he can help his parents with his skill he doesn't regret getting it. In a castle somewhere a girl is heading out, and asks her maid to bring her umbrella, someone calls out her name, Fyra and asks him where she is heading this late at night, and she tells him she is going for a walk because she couldn't sleep, he asks Fyra how many days it's been that she hasn't been able to sleep, she doesn't answer him and says she needs to find it, in name of the Duke Gildarts, she will find a comfy bed, she needs to find a skilled craftsman. There's a party going on in a castle, Duke Gildart is standing alone, and some nobles wonder if they can invite him for a dance. Duke Gildart asks a waiter to give him a drink, while he drinks Sir Julian calls out to him, and says his thanks for joining their annual gathering, Julian also tells him that he invited Hero Lin, and if he has seen her. Gildart Cray asks if he is talking about a true hero, and Sir Julian tells him that they found a lot of heroes this year, so the future of the world looks promising, after which he asks Lord Cray about his father, and Cray tells him that he has not been doing well, after hearing that Julian asks about his sister Fyra, as he asks about her, he turns around and starts selling himself for her partner, Cray just gives his glass to the waiter, and heads towards the door. Lord Cray goes in the hallway, where he accidentally meets Lin, the hero, their eyes meet briefly, and Cray thinks to himself that it must be hard for her to deal with all those nobles at her age. A guard asks Cray where he is going, and he tells the guard that he is going for some fresh air, after that someone tells him he has information about a bed, and Cray asks him if has found one, the mysterious person tells him he hasn't, but he has heard rumors that there is a inn, if you sleep there the bed will remove any fatigue from your life, and the furniture is also well made, after hearing it Cray asks the name of the inn, the person tells him it's the migratory bird inn. Unlike before there are a lot of people, and the inn is quite busy, Mir is having a hard time dealing with all the dishes, and the customer orders, some guy comes out of one of the rooms, and is feeling refreshed. The guy tells some other guy that the beds in this inn are softer than any other famous inn, and the guy replies by saying the chair is also very comfortable, hearing their conversation really as his mother thanks him, because all the furniture is made by his blacksmith skill, and are, ranked A, people like their furniture so much, and all these customers are here because of it, Rilius was really happy thinking all that, when someone shouted at him for his order and he starts running. Rilius is on a break, when Mir comes and calls out to him, Rilius asks her what's wrong, and Mir tells him that Master is summoning him, and he is making a weird face, Rilius wonders what's going on, he starts going with her and asks her what did she do, she says she didn't do anything but then she thinks what if his father is angry because of her mere existence, Rilius tells her to calm down, and soon they reach his office Rilius opens the door, and he is met with his father in chair with a dead serious expression, and he is releasing his aura all over the place, both of them are intimated by all this, and with worried expression and a cracking voice Rilius asks his father why did he summon him. His father tells them that a nobleman will spend a night in their inn, Mir asks him why would a nobleman would stay at their inn, and he tells her that thanks to Rilius their reputation rose, and it reached a nobleman's ear, so the fourth son of the Gildart family will be staying overnight, 
Mir is really shocked after hearing it, and says isn't that the ducal family, the great city of Gildart is a two-day trip from therein. A nobleman who is a lord and bears the name of the city, it's a ducal family which is at top among all the aristocrats. Rilius is suspicious about all this, but his father says that Rilius will handle everything regarding the noble guest, and Mir will be his assistant, and of course he will pay them more, bro if someone important like a duke is coming to your and shouldn't you handle him yourself, you are the owner, anyway Rilius is pumped about it, and asks Mir if she will do it, Mir replies hesitantly that she will do it, and leaves the room, Rilius notices that she is tensed up about something, while Mir is cleaning outside, Rilius tells her they are done here but Mir didn't listen, so he calls out her name again, and she replies a bit sadly, so Rilius asks her if she is worried about the noble status, she asks him how does he know when he tells her that her face and tail says it all, Mir says that she is thinking of turning down the request, and Rilius gets shocked hearing it, so Rilius asks her what she means by that, and she tells him that she loves them, in the inn, but she would bring shame to inn, in front of the noble men, and because of it she might get beheaded. Rilius tells her that she will be fine, and she is improving, and that's why his father believes in her and he will support her too, and she should be more confident, after hearing all that Mir is really pumped up, and thanks him, she tells him that Rilius is a good guy and she will work hard with him, after working out Mir's courage, Rilius thinks that he also should do his best, and goes in room 201, and says since a noble is coming, a rank furniture isn't good enough, so he takes out his hammer of creation, and starts smacking all the furniture so it can be upgraded to, s rank. You guys want me to make a part 2 of this manga, tell me in the comment section, also don't forget to like and subscribe, it would really help me out, also thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.